Hello and welcome to another Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby and this episode we're going to be going over what is important for a crafting tune, a good craft, good solid crafting tune. This was suggested by a viewer and let me get on my crafting tune. Here we go. This was suggested by a viewer so I'm going to go over the basics of what you need for a solid crafting tune. And there you go, you see my fleets intro. Let me show you first. Okay, so this was suggested by Thunder9656. And so what needs to go into a crafting tune? And so these are some thoughts that he had. All right, so uh, first thing, what level does it need to be? You need to unlock or you need to be at least level 11 to unlock the crafting. And you can see crafting is here under the duty officers and you have R&D right here. So you have to be at least level, I'm sorry, not 11, 15 to unlock crafting and you have a grand total once you've unlocked everything of six slots for a crafting tune i do recommend unlocking all six slots that's going to allow you to craft as many things as possible once you wish to start crafting so the next question he asks does career matter no it does not you can have any career whether it's a tech tune a science tune, an engineering tune, does not matter. So the next thing he asks, do crafting schools need to be higher than 15? No, they do not. A crafting school once at level 15, and you can see here, once at level 15, it unlocks its special item that you can craft once you're at level 15. The increase to level 20, all that does is increase the chance of getting a so let me see if we confirm all it does is increase the chance of getting an ultra rare when you actually do the craft all right it also if I were to come down here and craft a superior tech upgrade it also gives me a 99% chance every time with no catalysts of getting a critical, which gives me two upgrades instead of one. If I am at level 15, let's see, if I'm at level 15, that chance is only 78%. Okay, so this is at level 15 with a blue so I have only 78% chance of a critical, which much less chance than the 99 that I get here. All right, so that's what the difference between 15 and 20 does. It gives you a better chance at critical, uh, at a critical success for the items that you craft. Okay, most importantly, the weapons, consoles, if there are any, and tech upgrades, which are, for some things, for most people, your bread and butter. All right, so next question. Okay, where's the best place to get mats, missions, exchange, etc.? This kind of depends on what you have. If you have... EC to burn. For example, I have on this tune right now, I have 116 million. If you have energy credits to burn, you can most certainly buy crafting materials off the exchange. That's not that hard to do. Um, I would recommend if you're going to do this, buy the crafting boxes and uh, instead of the individual mats you're going to end up being having a lot cheaper um, 
your buck's going to go farther. If you do that, let me actually get to the exchange so I can show you what I mean. All right, here we go. And run to the exchange. So you can buy the crafting boxes with EC, and then this includes the ones that you get from running STFs. This includes the ones that you can buy out of the C store. You know, things like that. So, for example, I have here, so I did an ISA or Infected Space Advanced not too long ago, and I got a Advanced Q R&D Material Reward Package Trillium K. So if I wanted to buy that, I can buy one of those for 45000 Okay, that's actually not terrible. Now if I wanted to, let's say I want to take out the Trillium K and I just wanted to buy anyone. There we go. So there's lots of different ones as you can see, radiogenic particles and Trillium K, radiogenic. There are a whole bunch of them. And let's see, let me find the other ones. Do, 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 do. There's a whole bunch. Trillium K radiogenic. There we go. Argonite gas. There are, of course, come on. As you can see, there are very different ones. You've got Kralon gas. You've got dentarium. Plectin particles. Okay. Now, if I wanted to take off the advanced Q, I can, of course, make this broader and broader. Okay. And I've reached my 400, but there are all different ones available. And even at the top, at my 400, I still haven't even broken 100K. So this is definitely, if you have the EC for it, a cheap way to do it. Of course, you can always run the various STFs and get the rewards yourself. However, not everybody wishes to do that. So, personally, I run the STFs, I get the rewards, blah, blah, blah. So, but you can, of course, purchase these off the exchange straight away. There are, in missions, there are various nodes that you can go up to. Some of those nodes are uh, static, meaning they stay the same, and some are variable, meaning they change what crafting mat they give you. So, I'm going to head over to one particular node that I know of in one of the Japori missions. Alright, so... There are, point of that is there are various ways to get the crafting materials. You can also buy the crafting materials out of the C store. And in a moment when I'm done, here we go. Out of the C store. And you have items. There we go. Research and development pack. And then there's also. Where is it? Here we go. Research and Development Pack Bundle of four, and that's for a thousand, and then the single is for three hundred. Now, the good thing about these, they come with, they come with, where is it? They come with these, Major Research Boosts. They come with Technology Boosts. And they come with major, with research, with, hello, can't speak today, with major and just uncommon research boosts and technology boosts. Now the thing about these, if you see I'm mousing over it, increases the chance that your tech upgrade will improve the quality of an item. 
and this is two times quality improvement chance. All right. The technology boost greatly improves the amount of technology points that your tech upgrade will apply to an item. All right. So this is, as you can see, these are important now the regular ones. The major gives you two times and the regular or the uncommon ones gives you 1.5 times. So these are important for upgrading and these come out of the box that you buy from the C store. Whoops, I meant items. So these come out of this box and the four set. Okay, you can also buy them off the exchange, but I will warn you the two times is quite expensive. All right, where was I looking? I know what I was looking for. Hello. Beta quadrant. I'm sure, there we go. Transform. All right, so. That is the big thing if you're going to upgrade is the research boost and the best way to get those is definitely out of the boxes from the exchange and I need to remember which mission this node is in. I'll know as soon as I go in. Okay. But there are, as I said, there are nodes in various missions. For example, now I'm searching because it's been a while since I've needed it. I'm searching for it in a specific mission. I believe it's in this one. This is a patrol mission in the, uh, in the Romulan sector. And I believe this one has a crafting node, if I remember rightly. Maybe one of the other three. Come on, load already! But if you find nodes somewhere, go ahead and scan them. That's always worth a few, uh, a few crafting materials. And here we go. Come on, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. All right, come on. There we go. Another uh, idea and something that my husband and I have done, he has absolutely no interest in crafting. So he's just said, okay, I'm gonna give you all my crafting materials and you can make everything for me that I want. Well, he's not a big crafter. He doesn't want a lot of things, so, but he loves to open up those sea store boxes. So I get the better end of the deal on that one. Okay, it wasn't in there, and it might be in here. One of these has a node. I'm going to find it while we're looking. But, so that's always a good deal if you make with somebody that you know really well, you know, the other thing I would suggest if you have more than one character, as I do, every crafting material gets passed on to the tune that you want to be a crafting tune. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier to keep track of what you have, keep track of what you don't have, and to be able to, to uh, go to that one tune, get it leveled up properly, and then, and then uh, use that to craft all your material. Anything you craft is, at the very least, account bound. Nothing that you craft is character bound, so you can always craft something and switch it over later. All right, I am gonna find this. I am gonna find this if it kills me. All right. So the other big thing to remember is that when you get up to level 15, or sorry, yeah, when you get up to level 15 in crafting, it's not in this one either. 
Hello. When you get up to level 15 in crafting and you want to start crafting the big guns, the uh, TR-116B, for example, if you're in ground, the wide arc cannons, if you're in, uh, if you're crafting cannons, the um, omnidirectional beam, if you're crafting, this is our, my normal, I call it Japori or Taudewa run here. One of these I know has a crafting node in it. But if you're looking for those, to craft those, you're not going to be able to just get up to level 15 and go, oh, okay, now I can craft it. For example, if I wanted to craft an omnidirectional beam, here we go, I need to have a duty officer that has beams that has R&D beam weapons as his specialty. I'll show you how to look for this. Okay. So he says drill it. So let's look. Excuse me. In my roster. And very rare. Okay. see what specialty was he and he was energy weapon okay so let's find him energy weapon officer energy weapon officer there we go okay so here is Drillid now when you look at Drillid you'll see that he has this special thing, R&D school beam weapons. Now you notice not every energy weapon officer has that. Only the energy weapons officers that have, only the officers that have the R&D school can be used to craft the level 15 items. Okay. So out of all my energy weapons officers, only that one, only Drolid here, can craft that special beam weapon. And that's important, and as soon as we check this last one, we will find out where we can get some other crafting officers. I got that out of the Zindi lockbox. Now, Drolid nowadays is extremely expensive. Haha, -ha, we found it. Alright, so you see Karaya here, you see this here. That is, or should be, a crafting, yes. Alright, so you see here, this is for hydrazine gas. And you come up and you just scan it. And you're away from the battle. All you have to do is match and boom, you get your hydrazine gas. Now you can come out and come back in and be able to do this again. And if it's still hydrazine gas, then it's a static node. If it's not, then it's a variable node. All right, so let's try this again. And so you can do this all day long and farm a specific item. All right. Now, not every instance has this, so you'll have to learn the ones that do. So this is, of course, static for hydrazine gas. As I said, it's been a while since I have looked for this particular type of thing. And as you see, now I have 10 hydrazine gas, etc., 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 and this is how it works. All right. So now we were talking about duty officers. Duty officers 
as I said, you need a duty officer with R&D school and the specific school in order to craft the big guns or the big items. So for example, now I have one from just about every school. So if I wanted to craft my white art cannons, I have one for cannons. If I want to craft, now this is where it gets funky because you do need Gumer for the Aegis set, okay, in order to craft that. And he is a different one than what you need to craft the Conductive RCS, which is R&D Engineering. For ground weapons, you need an R&D ground equipment. For kits and modules, now I don't have, as you can see, you do not have a required duty officer, so I need to go buy one. Okay, and then projectiles, and I have one of those science and again we have the Aegis duty officer but I'm not worried about that and I have one of these now I bought these duty officers when they were still very cheap and then of course shields but you may be asking yourself okay well they're hella expensive now so what am I gonna do well have no fear there is something that you can do now, recently we added, STO added K13 Research Lab to the fleet holdings, and this was a good thing for crafters. And this was actually little known. The Probably the cheapest place to get duty officers for various crafting schools is from the K13 base. Now it's actually not, you actually have to figure out which ones, but good for you. You actually have to kind of gamble, Russian roulette, figure out which ones, but good for you. There is a list on the wiki. So I have here the STO wiki pulled up. There we go. And it lists, so here are the various duty officers that are listed on the STO wiki. Now this is for Federation and this is for the Empire, KDF Empire. All right, so you'll notice for Federation, we have Mark Ford Jones, Fabrication Engineer, and look at this, R&D Beams. And this is a green officer. Okay, and you can find the same thing. Oh, look at that. A green officer, a 10 R&D kits for the KDF side. Okay, now the feds, they got a lot of green R&D schools. Not so much for the KDF, but we're going to keep going. Okay, Sadtut, R&D projectiles. Dehosir, R&D Science, R&D Cannons, R&D Engineering, R&D Shields, R&D Ground, and R&D Kits, all under green for Fed and, hmm, looks like they're very, uh, only one for KDF. However, as you go through, all right, and then for Fed, I have a feeling this one, no, all right, and then for Fed for Blue, we have R&D Shields, R&D Ground, so you can look up right here what each officer does and what they have. Since this is a research lab, 
most of them have a research ability and even the purple ones we have R&D engineering, R&D science, R&D shields, R&D ground, R&D beams, R&D projectiles, R&D cannons, and R&D kits. Since I'm missing an R&D kit, I'm going to go to my research lab and I'm going to buy one. F-A-A-C-H, FACH. All right, so this is actually quite easy to do. All you do is you pull up your trans warp and you head to your K-13. Okay. And here we go. You should see the look my husband just gave me. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm on my K13 and we're going to dock and deal with the sloating, sloating, sloating. Sloating. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to use my map. I want to find... There it is. The personnel officer. So now I'm going to follow. Now this way. And this way. Okay. And here is my personnel officer. Now, I want duty officers. Now, you notice these are actually, I'd say, uncommon. They're rather cheap. They're only 7,500 fleet credits. That's very cheap. The rare ones, 15,000 fleet credits. And the very rare are 30,000 fleet credits. Now, Foch, now it's not, this is a thing, it's not listed here. You have no way of seeing it, which is why you need to look up on the list, on the wiki. Okay, so Foch is, has the R&D school for kids and modules, so now since I just bought him, if I want to go to kids and modules, and now I want to go and craft that, and there he is, kids and modules. Okay, so quite easy, and this is actually the cheapest way to acquire these bridge officers. There's no, there's certainly nothing wrong with using a green one. I'd prefer to have purple and I could afford it, so I bought a purple. There's certainly no nothing wrong with using a green or a blue duty officer for your crafting, just so long as you have one that has the school that you need to do the crafting in. As I said, every crafting school is represented here at K13, so you'll need to, you'll definitely need to, uh, get everyone that you will need to craft in. So those are the important things. All right, so to recap the TLDR version of this, uh, any officer can become a crafting officer, any character. The best thing to do, shovel all your crafting mats to that character, get all your schools up to 15 as soon as possible, and you will need a special duty officer labeled with the school that you want to craft in to craft the special item from that school. You can get those officers at K-13 base very cheaply. All right. <laughs> and you can hear the discussion. I hope you learned something here. You can hear the discussion of Teacher's Corner live every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I look forward to seeing you there.